Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be looking at our third nutrient cycle, we're going to be looking at the phosphorus cycle. And this is for your environmental science studies, but don't forget to revise this as a holistic unit. So this is a very holistic subject, everything is interconnected. So go and watch your videos for this, go and watch your videos after this, they are all ordered in the playlist. level environmental science. Topic 2. The physical environment. Lesson 21. The phosphorus cycle. Phosphorus cycles quite differently to the other cycles, carbon and nitrogen, as it does not have a gaseous form. This means it will not be found in the atmospheric reservoir at all. However, it is found in the hydrosphere as dissolved phosphate ions, in the lithosphere as phosphates in the soil and phosphorus rich rocks such as guano and in the biosphere in bones, DNA and cell membranes. Another characteristic to know about phosphorus is that it has a low solubility in water and one of the main reservoirs is the lithosphere in rocks. This, coupled with the fact that it doesn't have a gaseous form, means that the phosphorus cycle is much slower than the carbon and nitrogen cycles. It also means that generally, out of the three, phosphorus is most likely to be the limiting factor to plant growth in soil. A limiting factor can be defined as the factor in shortest supply. Due to the features of phosphorus we have discussed, it is the most likely element to be in the lowest concentrations. As with all the cycles, you need to have a diagram of some kind in your notes like this one. Again, in your exam, you could be asked to label missing reservoirs or processes in the cycle. The phosphorus cycle processes. Erosion and weathering. Erosion and weathering releases phosphorus from rocks, but also can cause the leaching of phosphorus into nearby water bodies due to soil erosion. When phosphorus ends up in water, it can undergo sedimentation after sinking to the bottom of the ocean and forming new rocks. The only way that this phosphorus cycle could be released again is if they underwent the process of uplift to form new mountains which could then be eroded or weathered to mobilise the phosphorus. If the phosphorus ended up dissolved in water in the soil, it could be absorbed by plant roots and then used by the plant to make important biological molecules. Plant roots are ineffective at absorbing phosphorus so it can end up leaching from the soil back into the water bodies where it could undergo sedimentation again. Once the plants have taken up the phosphorus, they may get eaten and the phosphorus will be transferred to the consumer. If the plant or consumer produce waste or dye, then the phosphorus would end up being decomposed by the soil biota such as bacteria and fungi. This releases the phosphorus back into the soil so it can be reabsorbed by other plants. Soil pH can massively impact the solubility of phosphate ions and therefore the ease at which plants can absorb them. In acidic conditions, the solubility of phosphates hugely increase which can lead to an increased risk of leaching and running off into nearby water bodies. Under alkaline conditions, phosphates are insoluble and are therefore not available for plant root absorption. Ideally, a farmer would want their soil pH to be around neutral to ensure the most phosphorus was available to their crops. How does human activity affect the processes in the phosphorus cycle? Firstly, we extract large amounts of phosphorus from the lithosphere by mining deposits such as guano. Guano is the accumulation of seabird droppings and is rich in phosphorus. We use the mined phosphorus in the manufacture of inorganic fertilisers. When the inorganic fertilisers are then spread onto fields, this whole process mobilises phosphorus at a much faster and a much larger volume than would have happened naturally, increasing the likelihood of eutrophication and other negative environmental impacts. How can we manage the phosphorus cycle? Sustainability. To manage the phosphorus cycle, we could reduce the amount we mine from deposits, such as guano, as the volume is depleting quickly. Instead, we could use organic fertilisers such as manure instead. 
Farmers can add mycorrhizal fungi to their soil, which forms a symbiotic relationship with crop roots. The fungi is particularly successful at absorbing phosphorus from the soil and it will pass this onto the plants in return for sugars that they make during photosynthesis. This may reduce our need to apply inorganic fertilisers as phosphate absorption will be more efficient. Furthermore, using crop breeding programmes and genetic modification to increase crops efficiency of phosphate absorption would have a similar effect. Ouch! This is why in some videos I've unexplained scratches.